All right, so um, I decided today to do um, a quick revision in the verse 30 minute uh, and uh, not to start chapter 16 until uh, next uh, Tuesday. So let's in the uh, next 30 minutes revise what we take right now in terms of chapter two and 13, 14 up to 15. Um, in terms of the equations that we have and can we use them and just like to refresh your memory on how to use the concept that we learned over the last uh, three weeks. Anybody have any questions so far in the course or anything? Okay, so uh, let's start by uh, chapter Twelve, and let's see what we have from chapter 12. So in chapter 12, uh, we were talking about the kinematics. And when we talk about kinematics, we mean the position of a particle. And actually, all what we take right now is under the concept of the dynamics of particles, not rigid bodies. So we will be talking about the kinematics and the kinetics of the particles. And the kinematic of the particles, we mean the position, the velocity, and the acceleration of the particle. And we relate these three quantities from, so we can move from the position to the velocity, to the acceleration by doing differentiation. So if you differentiate the position with respect to the time, it will give you V. If you differentiate the V with respect to the acceleration, it would, it would give you, uh, sorry, if you differentiate the velocity with respect to time, it would give you the acceleration. So V is equal to dS dt, and A is equal to dV dt. And actually you can eliminate dt from down there and you have it as a dv, a dv ds and you can have ds here and you have dt as a part of this and this will be equal to v dv ds. So right now the acceleration could be as a pure function in the velocity and uh, displacement. And if we want to go from the acceleration to the velocity to the position, we do integration. So you do integration with respect to t, and this would give you another uh, three equations. So uh, let's just make it. Blue each other. Okay, so we have here v dv ds. And if we want to do integration, so if you have here this equation as the integration of v dt will be equal to ds, this would give you v multiplied by t minus t node. This is if the uh, acceleration is constant. And let's make this in different format. Here, if we have constant acceleration, so we will be having V T minus T node, and this should give you S minus S node. And here, if you have this, and actually, if you have the acceleration, a dt will be equal to the integration of dv. And if the acceleration is constant, we can take it outside of the integration and this should give you a constant t minus t node will be equal v minus v node. So you can get the v and it will be v node plus a constant t minus t node. Then having the V, you can insert it here and integrate it. And this should give you another equation, which will be S 
minus S node will be equal to V node T minus T node plus half the A constant T minus T node square. And this is one of the equations that we have been using. And if you integrated this one, like integrate A with respect to DS, it should give you V dV integration. And this should give you a final equation V square minus V now the square will be equal to 2A constant in this S minus S node. So the main two equations with con the three equations with constant acceleration, this is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third one. And all of these equations are in your equation sheet. And this is only applicable if you have constant accelerations, this equation one, two, and three. If it is not mentioned that the velocity is, um, uh, uh, is increasing linearly, that means that the acceleration is constant or directly mentioned that the acceleration is constant, you will not be able to use this equation and you have to deal with this integral forms. So this non-constant acceleration you will have to deal with integral form. And keep in mind that I sometimes can give you this as a relationship between the, for example, the, let's say here is V and here is time. And we have the velocity as a function of time. And so if you integrate it from T1 to T2, and here's our integration t1 to t2, this would give you the ds because this is the definition of the integration. So the function v on the y-axis and dt, so we'll have t in the x-axis. If we were able to get the area under the curve, it will give you the, uh, the integration, I think, yeah, the integration of the ds here. Similarly, for the A with T, and if you have the, the function like this, and you integrate from T1 to T2, should give you the integration of dV. And similarly, T and, uh, sorry, this should be A DS. So we will have A in the Y axis and DS in the X axis. And we have the relationship like this. So if you were able to get the integration, the area under the curve from, for example, S1 to S2, this should give you the right hand side. And also you should be able to interpret uh, the curve. Sometimes I give you in the exam and that's what you learn it in your homework and like if you have the relationship between the velocity and time and it's given something like that and then i make it linear and then going like this so you should be able to know if this is line linearly so the acceleration will be constant so this is moving linear if it's curved and has like a the, the x square or something. So the acceleration will be uh, linear. So it depends on the velocity. Uh, the acceleration depends on the velocity, how it's uh, look like. And um, yep, and similarly, the acceleration can inform if you have A and T. And for example, you, you have the acceleration is increasing linearly and then constant. So if the acceleration is linear, so the velocity will be um, like a parabola or a power two, something like as a function of t square. And if the acceleration is constant, so that means that the velocity will be uh, a linear, something linear like this. So you should be, uh, you should understand these concepts because it's, uh, 
it's a derivative relationship. If you want to go from S to V, you will lose a, a, a power, like if S is function of T square, so V will be function of T and A will be a constant. And similarly, if you are going back from the acceleration to the velocity to the uh, position, so you will have to be following the same uh, thing. So this is for that. And um, I know I'm very slow, but I'm trying to revise with you some concept and refresh some ideas. Uh, so uh, this is for linear. And if you are, if we are talking about Cartesian or curve linear motion, so 2D motion, we divided the 2D motion into different things. So number one, we have Cartesian. Number two, we have um, the tangent normal. Number three, we have the polar. And in this one, it's a similar to the 1D, but all what you have is that the R is not in 1D. So you have R vector is equal to Rx in the I hat direction or we can call it x in the i hat plus y in the j hat. And similarly, the v vector will be equal to an r dot, which will be equal to vx in the i hat plus vy in the j hat. And the acceleration vector will be r double dot. And this is equal to v dot. And we will have ax in the i hat plus ay in the J hat. And most of the application on the Cartesian coordinate system is the projectiles, like you have a soccer ball here and you are kicking this ball and it will make something like this. So sometimes you will be given the V node. So you will have to find the VX and VY. So you can apply this Cartesian coordinate system and knowing that most of the projectile problems uh, are constant to acceleration and it's only have a y is equal to negative g, which is negative 9.81 meter per second, or negative 32.2 feet per second square. So this is meter per second square, and this is feet per second square. So this is uh, most of the uh, projectiles, and basically you will use all these equations, but you will have a one in the x direction and another one in the y direction, and you can use the concept of constant acceleration. So in the tangent normal coordinate system, you have like the bodies moving on a curve and this body's here. So we agreed that always the velocity will be tangent to the path. So if we are talking about tangent normal and we need to decide where is the, the positive and negative direction. So the tangent is in the direction of the increasing velocity and the normal is perpendicular to the tangent toward is the center of the curvature. And we have only here V tangent and a V vector is described as V tangent in the T hat plus zero in the N hat because, because all the velocity is in the tangent direction. So this is similar to the 1D like because the velocity has only one component and in its, its tangent to the path. So if you are moving on a straight line like this and your body is moving like this, so this is the V tangent because it's the, for a straight line, the velocity will always be tangent to the pass. If it's curved, so it will keep tangent like this, like that. And uh, for the acceleration, you will have two <clears throat> types of acceleration, A tangent, in the t hat plus a normal in the n hat. And a tangent is corresponding to the 1D acceleration. Sometimes the, the et could be in this direction or it could be in this direction. So if the a tangent and the v tangent could be dealt as a 1D uh, motion and we can apply all of these equations on the in the tangent direction, all, all the 1D equations. <clears throat> so this is 
for the tangent direction. So let's see what we have for the normal direction. For the normal direction, we have new term, which is the an is equal to the v tangent square over the radius of the curvature. And if the radius of the curvature is not given, sometimes you will be given an equation. So we agreed that there is an equation that can get you the radius of the curvature by taking the first derivative and square it and have all this to the power three over two and you have the second derivative down there. So you can get uh, the row. And for the, so this is for the, uh, the tangent uh, normal coordinate system. That's what we basically, you have to do. Sometimes you, uh, you can have this as a part of, you know, that V tangent. If this is the radius and you know, the V tangent, sometimes V tangent is not given and sometimes you will be given omega. So V tangent is equal to rho multiplied by omega and omega is the angular velocity, which is equal to theta dot, is the time rate of a change of the uh, angle. And so with this, you can have here rho square theta dot square over rho. So sometimes you multiply rho multiplied by theta dot square or rho omega square. So all of these are, can be expressed for the normal axis. Sometimes you will be given omega and use omega to get uh, the uh, normal. Sometimes you will get V tangent uh, directly, just like keep in mind that the V tangent is always the radius of the curvature if it's a circle, so it will be R omega. So if it's a curve that keep it changing the radius, so it will be R multiplied by omega. Uh, for the polar coordinate system, it gets more complicated as we will have V will be equal to V in the R direction, R hat plus V theta, and we will have theta hat and VR is equal to the time rate of change of the uh, position and V theta will be equal to R theta dot, which is R omega. And we will have here theta hat and here R uh, hat. And for the acceleration, we will also have AR in the R hat plus A theta in the theta hat. And AR is equal to um, R double dot minus R theta dot square in the R hat. In the, in the theta hat, so it will be r theta double dot plus 2r dot theta dot in the theta hat direction. Usually you are given r as a function like uh, 3 multiplied by 1, 2 cosine theta. So you, did, you uh, differentiate r with respect to theta. And I teach you before how to get this. We are not differentiating, sorry. Uh, r dot is r dr dt, which is completely different from dr d theta. And I teach you how to get this and get r double dot. And similarly, uh, theta and theta dot and theta double dot sometimes will be given in the problem or you're given the information how uh, to get them. And then we move to applications on the uh, and these, uh, and we used like the pulley system. And for the pulley system, you will have to be careful how many uh, pulleys that we have. For example, you have a pulley here and you are having a force here and there's another one there and this is attached here and all of these is one cable. So you will have to define a datum to measure from and then you measure your distance and let's assume that this is poly A and this is poly B. So this one is YB and this one is YA. And then you will have, so this is point A and let's, this is a fixed. And then you will only have one equation that two YB plus YA will be equal to constant. And then from these, you can get VB can get this equation and use it in your uh, problem. If you have two cables, so you will be having 
uh, two equations. And also one of the applications on this, uh, we taught the relative motion. So if you have two cars, one is moving this way and the other is moving this way, this is VA and this is VB. So if we want to get the velocity of car B with respect to A, VB with respect to A, so you will have this equation, VB will be equal to VB with respect to, sorry, let's put VA first. So it doesn't matter. So here, this is A. And if you want to get VA, uh, sorry, VA with respect to B, so you will have VA here and you will have VB plus VA with respect to B. And they are totally different quantities. So if you are getting VA with respect to B, so it will be something like this, VA with respect uh, to B. And this is the, uh, this, the same equation we will be using for acceleration. So if you want to get AA, so it will be AB plus a, a with respect to B. And make sure in this equations that the uh, subscripts uh, will be equal like A will be equal B multiplied by A over B. So it will give you A on the left and right hand side. So this is for chapter uh, two. And for chapter three, we used our um, knowledge, ch chapter 13, force and acceleration. So the main equation in this chapter is the Newton second law, which have the sum of all the forces will be equal to the mass multiplied the acceleration. And if we are dealing with Cartesian coordinate system is completely different if we are tangent normal or if we are uh, on a polar coordinate system. So if it's Cartesian, so you will have the sum of the forces x so we will convert this vector form of the equation to x y direction so it will be equal m a x and the sum of f y will be equal to m a y and then we use our information about the velocity or the time to get a x or sometimes you are given all the forces to get the a x so the kinematics can be used to get the acceleration if we want to Sometimes you will be given information about the velocity and displacement to get acceleration or get information about the velocity and time to get acceleration. And similarly, uh, in the tangent normal direction, so you will have some of the forces in the tangent direction will be equal ma tangent and some of the forces in the normal direction will be equal to ma normal. And for the uh, polar, so you will have the sum of the forces in the r will be equal mar and some of the forces in the theta will be equal to m a uh, theta. And so this is uh, Cartesian, and this is tangent, and this is polar r and theta, t and n. And for this, you should be careful if you are dealing with forces, you should understand all types of forces and how it acts. So if you have inclined surface and uh, you have a body that is moving on the surface, uh, attached with a certain spring like this, and uh, this body has like a force be acting in this direction. So all the forces are existing here. So you will have the weight is going down, always go down in the direction of the gravity and you will have a normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. And if you assume that this body is moving in this direction, so you will have the friction force in this direction, it's always mu kinetic multiplied by N. And assuming that this body is moving this way, so you will have the spring is in this way and F is spring is always negative and you should take care of this in your equation and k the uh, the stiffness of the spring multiplied by the delta and the spring so this is all the type of forces that could be in the body sometimes you will be given the problem that you have a color that move on the a curved uh, bass like this and it has 
a spring that something like this and so you will have may just make sure that you will always have the normal force is perpendicular to the surface and the weight is going down and the spring is in the direction of the F spring and you put all the forces if 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 this is not a smooth surface so you will be having a friction and you should assume a direction like this body is moving this way so you will have a friction is always tangent to the surface and this friction is F S and this is N so you put all the forces and for the partial credit you should um, uh, put all the um, the forces in a free body diagram and have another one for the kinetic diagram. If you only draw one, you might lose point. If you draw two, you get your points full and also uh, uh, just like uh, make sure that you put all the forces. So if you miss one of them, so you always lose points. So if you want to get the full uh, grade for the partial credit, uh, uh, even if you don't have the final answer right, just to draw your free body diagram right, knowing how the forces act is, uh, it's like normal, perpendicular to the surface, friction tangent to the surface, weight is going down, uh, spring is always in the direction of the spring, so you should have all of these um, in your uh, uh, free body diagram. And then we move to chapter 14, with the concept of work in energy. And for work in energy, we only have like main two equations. This equation is the kinetic energy at position one, like we have a body that is moving from position one here, going to position two here. So it has V1 and it has V2, and there's some kind of forces that acting on the past, like assume that there is a spring and there's weight and there's a lot of forces. So the kinetic energy at position one plus all the work done from one to two will be equal to the kinetic energy at position two. And the kinetic energy is equal to half the mass at V1 squared plus the work done by all the forces, like you will have, you should have the work done by the weight, the work, done by the spring, the work done by any external force, the work done by the friction, all the work, all the works should be here, and this should be equal to mv2 square. Uh, equations similar to this one is the conservation of work and energy. So it's, a, it's an equation that you put the kinetic energy plus the potential energy plus the work done by the non-conservative force and let's call it u non-conservative will be equal to t2 plus v2 and this will be half mv1 square which is the kinetic energy and the potential energy is only come from the weight and the spring so what we do is that we eliminate the weight and the spring from this equation and put it them here and we have them as mg h1 this is the potential energy of the coming from the weight plus half k s1 square the uh, initial elonga elongation in the spring plus the sum of the uh, work done by the non-conservative force like external force b or f so u non-conservative will be equal to half mv two square plus mg h2 plus half ks two square. So this is the uh, second equation that we have and we can use it. Both of these equations could be applied to any problem. So just pick one and determine which one that works best uh, for you. So, so this is for chapter 14 and chapter 15, we just like have spent all over the last week uh, 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 talking about chapter 15, just I will emphasize on one last concept is that when you have a ball that hitting a wall like this or with any angle, like you have a ball like this and hitting a wall like that, just like you will have to de determine what is the, when the ball comes here, 
you will have force coming from here and force coming from here. We call this as the line of contact and this as the line of impact. So in the line of impact, we apply some equations and in the line of contact, we apply other equations. Just make sure that you are applying the right equations. And what I totally recommend is that you, before you start any problems that have collision, you should determine which surface that is line of contact and which surface is the line of impact. And then after you determine this, you decide which equations that you will use. And uh, good luck with your and, uh, see you guys, um, uh, next week. And I hope that you will uh, do great in your midterm exams and also your quest today. Okay, see you guys. Thank you. Thanks.